Under the Biden administration, 10.4 million illegal immigrants have been released into this country. And Senate Democrats are desperate to avoid the misery and suffering and death that their radical policies have produced. In a hearing before the Judiciary Committee, I asked Secretary Mayorkas how many migrants died last year crossing illegally into this country. He said, I don't know, I have no idea. I said, of course you don't. The number is 853. That's a number from your own department. But you don't care about the dead bodies that Texas farmers and ranchers are finding nearly three a day. When I brought 19 senators down to the border to see firsthand what was happening, we went out on a boat on the Rio Grande River. We saw a man floating dead in the river who had drowned that day. By the way, those 19 senators were only Republicans. I've invited my Democrat colleagues. I've invited the senator from Illinois. Come to the southern border and see the people that are dying because of the policies you support. None of them have any interest in seeing firsthand the deaths they are producing. If you trust the Secretary Mayorkas didn't authorize millions of individuals to enter illegally into our country for swift and precursory release into the interior, don't object to my resolution. Just hold a trial. If you're certain the Secretary Mayorkas hasn't, in fact, increased the poll factors incentivizing parents across the globe to send some 430,000 unaccompanied children into the United States, it, in many cases, to have them end up in the hands of traffickers, then by all means, don't object. Hold a trial. If you're confident that Secretary Mayorkas hasn't created at least 13 illegal immigration parole programs designed to increase the flow of people into this country by the hundreds of thousands in violation of the very law invoked to facilitate their admission, then don't object. Hold a trial. If you're so sure, so confident, so certain that Under Secretary Mayorkas, Customs and Border Protection hasn't dramatically decreased its vetting processes for allowing Chinese immigrants to cross our border with military age Chinese males, don't object. Hold a trial. If you believe that we haven't seen a dramatic increase in the known terrorist encounters at our southern border, don't object. Hold a trial. If you're confident that Secretary Mayorkas hasn't allowed enough fentanyl to flow across the southern border to kill every man, woman, and child in the United States of America, don't object. Hold a trial. We are facing today an existential crisis at our southern border. It is qualitatively different than anything we have ever faced at our southern border in the history of our nation. A few moments ago, the senator from Illinois acknowledged the border was broken. Although, he acknowledged it in a classic Washington way of using the passive voice, the border is broken, that is designed to hide and obscure who broke the border. He is correct that the border is broken, but it was broken deliberately by the President of the United States, Joe Biden, by the Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris, by the Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas, and by every single Senate Democrat who repeatedly have rubber-stamped and embraced this open border policy. The senator from Illinois said the border is broken. He is also the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee on which I serve, on which Senator Lee serves, on which Senator Kennedy serves. In the past three years, we have held precisely zero hearings on the crisis on our southern border. The Senate Judiciary Committee cannot be bothered to inquire as to the cause of this crisis. Understand why Alejandro Mayorkas became the second cabinet secretary in the history of the United States to be impeached. The last one was in 1876, the Secretary of War. And now, 148 years later, Alejandro Mayorkas joins him. It is not because Alejandro Mayorkas is incompetent. It is not because he's negligent. It's not because he's bad at his job. 
Rather, unfortunately, Alejandro Mayorkas is very, very good at his job. However, he does not view his job as securing the border. He does not view his job as protecting our homeland security. Rather, he views his job as openly and directly violating, flouting federal law and aiding and abetting the criminal invasion of this United States. He is not trying to secure the border. He is trying to accelerate the invasion that is happening. He wants more illegal aliens and more criminal illegal aliens released into this country. With my resolution, we'd be ready to conduct a fair and legitimate trial. So to my colleagues, if you're confident that the charges against Secretary Mayorkas are baseless, then why object to organizing a fair and legitimate trial? Why try to sweep this under the rug? Why pardon someone before they're even afforded the opportunity to prove their innocence? Madam President, when I asked Secretary Mayorkas about colored wristbands on a poster I displayed at the Senate Judiciary Committee, he responded by saying he had no idea what those wristbands are. Madam President, those colored wristbands are worn by just about every illegal alien coming to this country. The colors correspond to how many thousands of dollars they owe the cartels. Understand, the cartels don't view them as human beings. They don't even view them as livestock. They are cargo. And the colors show how many thousands of dollars they owe. If you stand on the banks of the Rio Grande River, you will see hundreds or even thousands of those colored wristbands laying there in the grass. And what Alejandro Mayorkas was saying, as I told him, I said, Mr. Secretary, you just told the American people, you're utterly incompetent at your job and you don't even give a damn enough to pretend to try. Well, next week when the articles arrive, we are told that Senator Schumer intends not to proceed to a trial, not to follow the Senate rules of impeachment, not to allow any evidence, but simply to move to table, to throw it out at the outset. Why is Senator Schumer doing so? Three reasons. Number one, he desperately, desperately wants to stop the House managers from presenting their evidence. Senator from Illinois says he knows there's no evidence like an ostrich putting his head in the sand, one way to know there's no evidence is look at no evidence, hear no evidence, consider no evidence, and do everything you can to prevent the American people from hearing evidence. Number two, the Senate Democrats want to stop a trial. They don't want the American people to know the suffering and misery and dead bodies their policies are producing. But number three, the Senate Democrats def desperately want to prevent Democrats who are on the ballot right now from casting a vote, guilty or not guilty, they want to avoid an adjudication. Because you know what? Senate Democrats are back in their home state saying, gosh, I'm really concerned about illegal immigration. If they were really concerned, we can decide that next week by voting to fulfill our constitutional obligation to hold trial. An invasion, Madam President, is taking place on American soil. At least 8 million people that's at the low end, have illegally crossed our border since Mayorkas became Secretary of Homeland Security. And the numbers just keep rising. This unprecedented influx includes gang members, it includes drug traffickers, human traffickers, dangerous individuals from every single country in the world, including the thousands of military-aged males from China. In December alone, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security reported 302,000 encounters. That's in one month. The highest number ever recorded in a one-month period. These are not the kinds of records he should try to be breaking, but he's broken them again and again and again. When I invited my Democrat colleagues, come to the border and see the wristbands, the Democrats don't take, take us up on it. And understand why those wristbands matter. Thousands upon thousands of teenage boys, they turn themselves into the Biden administration. They say, where do you want to go? Some will say Chicago, some will say New York, some will say Los Angeles. And the Biden administration puts them on an airplane, puts them on a bus and sends them to every city in America. The mayor of Chicago, the hometown of the senator from Illinois, has declared it a crisis. The illegal aliens pouring into his city. 
And yet, Senate Democrats not only will do nothing about it, they continue the policies in place that make it worse and worse and worse. And understand, those teenage boys, when they arrive in Chicago or L.A. or New York, and by the way, the Democrat mayor of L.A. has also said it's a crisis. The Democrat mayor of New York has said it's a crisis. The Democrat mayor of Boston has said it's a crisis. The Democrat mayor of Washington, D.C. has said it's a crisis. When they arrive, they owe the cartels thousands of dollars. If they don't pay the money back, the cartels will murder their families. And so they are working for the cartels. There are crimes going on in your home state of California today by illegal immigrants the Biden administration has released that are working for the cartels. There are Californians who are being robbed right now, who are being carjacked, who are being assaulted. There are people in Chicago who are being robbed, who are being assaulted. Now, to be clear, Secretary Mayorkas has the tools to stop this invasion, to halt it in its tracks. And he has the tools to do it today. Not only does he have the tools, but he has the obligation and the sworn responsibility under the laws of the United States to do so. He doesn't need legislative action from Congress. Madam President, these aren't victimless crimes. The tragic case of Lake and Riley, my life cut short by an illegal alien, one of the millions whom Secretary Mayorkas is allowed to enter our country unchecked, is a reminder of the human cost of this prolonged, severe, deliberate, malicious abdication of duty. Lakin isn't alone. Her case represents hundreds of thousands of families across the nation whose lives have been upended by the invasion that our leaders willfully allowed to happen and indeed invited. In fact, they encouraged them to happen. Should Secretary Mayorkas be found guilty. These are impeachable offenses of the highest order. Make no mistake, this is not mere maladministration. This is deliberate, willful, malicious determination to break the law in order to bring in millions of people who do not belong here. Madam President, Many of us were here the last time this scenario happened. It was the first Trump impeachment. The first Trump impeachment, you had a Democratic House, a Republican Senate, and a Republican President. The Democrats in the House impeached Donald Trump. They sent articles of impeachment over. The Senate Republicans could have played these games and tried to table the impeachment, said, we're going to shirk our constitutional duty. We're not going to have a trial, but we didn't. We followed the Constitution. My question for my colleagues here is, is there even one Democrat who cares about the institution of the Senate, who cares about the Constitution, who cares about democracy? Democrats love to pound their chest and say they are defending democracy while they are engaging in a relentless assault on democracy. I have an organizing resolution that would follow the precedent and simply appoint an impeachment committee to hear the trial. So the trial doesn't have to be on the Senate floor. That's typically done for presidents. Instead, the impeachment committee could hear, hear the evidence, which is what the Senate has done over and over and over again. By the way, every Democrat who says we've got other things to focus on, FISA and other matters, the impeachment committee would proceed parallel with the Senate floor considering other business. So it would delay nothing on the Senate floor to follow our Constitution and have an impeachment committee, but it would avoid destroying the impeachment power of the Senate destroying the Constitution, and it would also give the American people a chance to hear the evidence and to, to, to hear the presentation of the House managers. Therefore, Madam President, I ask unanimous consent that the Committee on Rules and Administration be discharged from further consideration, and the Senate now proceed to S. Res. 622. Further, that the resolution be agreed to and that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Reserving the right to object. Senator.